everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate it. It is book called Baby. <laughs> I'm stupid. I know. I know. You don't got to tell me. I already know these things. Anyway, I think goofy is more than better, is more appropriate than stupid. Don't you think? Stupid's harsh. That's harsh words. Anyway, it is book haul day. The day in which I talk about the book hauls, books that I picked up in the month of August. It is September 1st, Septo 1, where I come from. But I picked up quite a few books in August, and I got zero room for books. So I don't know what that means. I got every time a book goes in, stuff has to be moved out. Stuff in, stuff out. It's just the way it works. It's depressing. I got an entire wall with bookshelves. I just need to start taking over more space in the house, you know? Let's take over more space. But anyway, I'd like to talk about some of the books that I haven't done unboxing videos for. I did quite a few unboxing videos, but here's some great things I picked up already. I didn't bother doing videos for a lot of them because maybe one book by itself does not a video make or maybe it's a book that's been out a while and nobody was really interested in seeing a standalone video of. but i'll show you some of the things i picked up there's a, a second and charles it's a chain of used and new bookstores and sometimes i'll find some good stuff there i've shown you some signed books that i've gotten there i got a first edition first print of uh, legion by william peter blatty signed by william peter blatty there and it was in the W section, right next to F. Paul Wilson. Lucky me. <laughs> and I found some signed F. Paul Wilson books there. One of my very favorite authors who ever lived, F. Paul Wilson. I found some good signed books there that I didn't already have. And I found another signed book there. And this one is Arnold Schwarzenegger's Be Useful, Seven Tools for Life. And it is a signed copy. And I grew up, I was born in the 76 but I grew up in the 80s. And as a guy in the 80s, I grew up a young man, action movie lover. I loved action movies and the action icon of the 80s was Arnold Schwarzenegger. You're gonna argue about Sylvester Stallone and I'm not gonna argue with you. I was a fan there too. But Arnold had some great ones, a lot of them, a lot of action flicks in the 80s. In fact, there was a TV channel that, that advertised himself as a channel that shows movies for guys that like movies. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was the guy who made movies for guys that like movies. But anyway, this was a signed copy that they had at Second and Charles. And it was at list price and they had multiples and I just took one. But it is signed in person by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, seven tips for a useful life. I've heard Arnold at this lately in life on the internet doing, he's, he's really become more of a motivational kind of guy wanting to help people be better people, whether it be exercising a little bit or trying to do things right or improving your mental health, fighting addictions and things like that. So he seems to be really putting a lot of effort and emphasis into helping people. And that's good. Helping people, I think, is a great thing. But uh, it's not a book about action movies or bodybuilding or any of that kind of stuff. Seven-time Mr. Olympia. And uh, he's got a lot of cool things that he's been able to accomplish in his life, but I've never had anything in my life signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is an icon from my ute. So I was glad to be able to get something signed by Arnold. And this one is actually a third print. Man, they sold a lot of books. Sold a lot of these books, but this one is a third print. If you'll look here, uh, if you look right back here, it flat out says third print, but it's signed book by Arnold to add to my book collection. So I'm in. I left the others for other lucky folks to jump on. They sell quite a bit more than list price on the eBay. So it's good, got a deal. I wouldn't pay 80 bucks for the book probably, but I definitely would pay 28 or whatever that one was there. I also went to other bookstores over the course of the month, some independently owned bookstores. And this one was a bookstore called a novel idea in Ocala, Florida. So a novel idea, I went in there and I looked around a little while, um, nice restroom facilities, but I went into a novel idea and I did pick up a couple of books. And one of them is this trade paperback soft cover edition of Ray Garten's Live Girls. And I've got a limited edition, signed edition book of this 
copy of this book from Centipede Press, and I haven't read it yet, so I was really looking forward to getting a soft cover version to read. But if graphic design is your thing, man, the cover of this book just is uh, is something to behold. It really attracts the attention with the neon signs and all that stuff and the fangs peeking out of the mouth of a, of a lady on there. So the, the cover really does attract. And uh, I'm really looking forward to reading some Ray Garden stuff. I know some people are big fans of Ray and vampires are cool. So I wanna see his take on vampires and there's a reader copy. And at the same store, I'm looking around and I'm looking at Kuntz stuff. And I see on the spine, it says Dean Kuntz, Star Blood. And I've never heard of such a book. Never in my life have I heard of this book. And it was $2.99. So I had the chance, I had the shot, and I took it. And it's a first edition, first print, soft cover version. So I pulled out the phone just to see what people say about Star Blood. And I looked on eBay, and people are paying 25 or 30 bucks for this soft cover copy of Star Blood. So guess what? Three bucks, I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, I'll go on the shelf and I'll get to it eventually. I've got a lot of stuff to read, but I'll get to this one if I live long enough. Looking forward to some early Coots Star Blood. And uh, yeah, so that was a neat little stop in at a small town bookstore. Now I stopped at another city in Florida called Tampa. Ever heard of it? And there's a bookstore in Tampa called Mojo Books. And I'll stop in there from time to time every few months and they usually end up picking up something. But they had a section in there that was about uh, scripts. I think the section was called scripts and making of movies and stuff. Lots of books about actors. But they had this novelization of the TV show Gunsmoke. Now, it doesn't say it's a novelization the very first episode or anything like that. But it sounds like it's a gun smoke story. And it's about the uh, the characters in the show. It shows James Arnass, Marshall Dillon on the front. So it looked good to me. I had the shot and I took it. I took that, added it to my novelization collection. A very short, soft cover book. It is a first print edition, although it, uh, uh, it, it's not in perfect condition. It is in good shape for a book of its age. Let's see, when was this printed? 1970. So that's a few years. If my math is correct, that's definitely a few years, 1970. So it's been around the horn a little bit. It's been taken good care of all of these years. Now I collect movie novelizations for movies and TV shows apparently that I dig, not all of them, just the ones that I like. And here's a movie that I kind of liked and a lot of science fiction folks really loved Galaxy Quest. And they had a very cheap copy of a major motion picture starring Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman, a novel by Hugo Award winner, Terry Bisson, Galaxy Quest. So I jumped on that one. I think that one was a little bit more. I think it was $3.99. Ooh, I paid a whole lot for that one. $3.99, and uh, it goes into the movie novelization collection. And it is a first print, first edition. You can see the number line there at the bottom. I actually made quite a few of these copies. It's not like it's a very extremely valuable book or anything like that. But the novelization collector has to understand some of these novelizations are worth a lot of money, worth way too much money for a little old soft cover book. And some of them are really cool and they're worth almost a few bucks. They're worth not much. So that's the way it goes. I still like them. So I was glad to get this novelization for the collection. Next up is a book I bought from VJ Books. VJ Books has been selling signed copies of books for a long, long time. Longer, longer than I've been collecting books. And they've been going out of business for a long, long time. For It seems like forever. They've been going out of business. And every now and then I'll pull up their site and just go back and make sure there's not something that I'm missing. Well, I was looking through my collection here today, and there's a book by F. Paul Wilson, one of my very favorite authors, called The Laneg Chronicles. It has it's a combination of multiple stories that all fit together in this world. And they've been combined in the Laneg Chronicles. And I like signed editions of books, and I had a signed edition of this book, and I pulled it off the shelf one day, opened it up. 
and I remembered it was signed to Mary, not to Tim or uh, I don't know Mary. It was signed to Mary, and I thought, dang, I want to get one that's not signed to Mary or not signed to anybody really. I just want a signed book. So uh, when I was on VJ Books, not thinking about that, I type up some of my favorite authors. F. Paul Wilson is one of them, and uh, lo and behold, they had a first edition, first print copy of the Laneg Chronicles. It's only available in soft cover, and it's just signed. It's not to Mary. It's not to anybody else. And it is a first edition, first print. This one here says first printing flat out right there. And so a hole I forgot I had in the collection has been filled. So it goes right back on the shelf. And uh, oh, Mary's book, I might let's see if somebody else wants it. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do with it, but Mary's book gets bumped. Now, speaking of F. Paul Wilson, this is a book. It's called The Peabody Ozymandias Traveling Circus and Oddity Emporium. And it's a great looking book. And I bought the numbered edition as soon as it came out. This book came out, when did it come out? This book came out 2007. It came out 2007, the artwork is by Coniglia. So I had a numbered edition. It's a cloth bound book and it's numbered, I can't remember. Number to something hundred. I don't know. There wasn't a bunch of them, but I found this one. It is a PC lettered copy and the lettered edition is leather bound. And, uh, it has the, uh, the colophon page, the signature page is in color. The numbered edition was in black and white. This is a PC copy signed by the artist Caniglia, as well as by the author F Paul Wilson. And so just a, a slight upgrade to the numbered edition. Seems like everything else is the same. Uh, I, I might be forgetting something else. Seems like everything else is the same. So I got a numbered edition that I might just sell on eBay or something like that. I don't know, I don't really need both of them. But this is an interesting book here, story, novella, I guess you might call it. F. Paul Wilson put together this project called Freaks. And what it was, was essentially F. Paul Wilson had a theme, a traveling circus with actual mutants or of some sort in this circus. So it's not fake, it's a real thing. Magicians and magic and people who could do amazing things and weird skills and all that stuff. Truly sci-fi type of stuff, not just people with neat skills. <clears throat> and it's led by a, a, a strange guy, Ozzy Oz. He is also featured in the fourth book of the Repairman Jack series, All the Rage. But anyway, what F. Paul Wilson did was he wrote beginning and end and some stuff along the way. And then in between it's filled by stories of a particular character in this traveling oddity emporium and different authors wrote different sections of that story. And again, F. Paul Wilson did the beginning and the end and pieces in the middle to kind of make it a cohesive story. So it's a very neat concept and I loved it. I read that in 2009 on my honeymoon on a cruise. <laughs> I read Freaks and I really, really liked it. But with this, what they've done, what this publisher did, NEP, is they took F. Paul Wilson's portions, the beginning and the end and the pieces in the middle, that made it a cohesive story. They took all that stuff. He wrote a little bit more to make it flow right as one story all by itself, subtracting all the other writers and the characters. See, you'd start with a story, then it would break off of this one little character's little arc, and then it would go to another character's arc. And F. Paul Wilson in between would kind of make it dot the dot the dot, connect the dot sort of a thing. But they took F. Paul Wilson's part and made a cohesive story out of it and some amazing artwork and check out that cover just a freaky cover so i was glad to be able to get the lettered edition there and uh, upgrade in my collection i guess if you will now i mentioned that i dig movie novelizations and what movie out there <laughs> would be better to have a movie novelization of than the bride of frankenstein and I didn't know there were such things. And in fact, there's different versions of movie novelizations written by different people. 
And this one, I didn't know existed. I saw it on eBay. I liked the cover a lot. Somebody on Facebook, on one of these movie tie-in Facebook groups, or movie novelization Facebook groups, posted one. So I looked it up and I found this one. I liked the cover. I was able to find one on eBay at an affordable price. This one is written by Michael Egermont. And from what I read, some people say this one isn't such a good book. But I like, I'm looking forward to it anyway. I like the story, I like the movie, and I like movie novelization. So I get to add one to my collection. And I'd like to find the other, and I can't remember the other author that wrote one, but I'm searching and I'll find one of them too. So a cool concept there. All right, almost to the end here. One of my favorite authors and one of my favorite series characters is Nelson DeMille's John Corey series. And this was the first John Corey book that I ever read, Lion's Game. It's actually the second book in the series. Plum Island is the first, and Plum Island is probably my best. Lion's Game is very, very, very good, though. I've liked them all, but I like the first and the second the best. And George jo John Corey is a disabled, essentially disabled New York cop. And he, he was shot up by a terrorist organization. He was shot up in the line of duty. And he's going to live, I think it was in the very first book, his uncle's place in Nantucket. I think that's where it was, Nantucket. Uh, anyway, he's approached by a anti-terrorist task group. And he ends up ultimately being recruited into this task group over a series of many novels and uh, all sorts of different adventures, recurring characters. The, the villain in this book comes back in another book later on. But he's a wisecracking New York cop. And when I read John Corey, I think of the very first Die Hard, John McClane. Wisecracking, even in the worst of situations, he never really seems to be shaken by it. He's always ready to fight, full of piss and vinegar, and John Corey's the same way. So Lion's Game was the second book in that set. And I was able to get a signed copy, which I had a first edition, first print hardcover copy. But to me, signed is always better. So I was able to add a signed copy of this book, and I'm very glad it was a hole in my collection, if you will. And another very popular book by Nelson DeMille is called The Gold Coast. Now, this is a book that I haven't read, and there was a sequel to The Gold Coast, but I, I didn't have any copies of this one. And the person that I bought that one from had one of these. It was an eBay purchase. But anyway, I got a signed copy, first edition, first print of The Gold Coast one of Nelson DeMille's most popular books and one that I'm glad uh, to be able to have and read. I've got a ratty old paperback sitting over there that I'm going to read of this book here. Uh, and it'll be my first Nelson DeMille book that's not part of the John Corey series. And lastly, I got one more. I was at Camelot Books. Ever hear of them? Lando Lakes, Florida. And I went there to pick up a Sun Tup edition, numbered edition book that I had pre-ordered with them called Born of Man and Woman, and I went to pick that up. Glad to add that to my collection. But I'm talking to the, the owners, standing there chit-chatting a little bit, and I'm looking at a numbered edition of The Godfather, Sun Tup Edition's numbered edition of The Godfather by Mario Puzo. And it occurred to me that I didn't, I had the numbered edition, but I've been wanting an artist edition. I didn't have one. So I just said, hey, you guys don't happen to have an artist edition of the godfather do you and they lo and behold show enough they did so i got it i got the artist edition of mario puzo's the godfather from camelot books and it comes in this beautiful slip case like every sun tup editions uh, artist edition book does and it came with the dust jacket already in this broad art mylar dust jacket protector which i wrap all my books dust jackets in them anyway it's uh so they they took a step that i didn't have to take and <laughs> helped to fill a hole in my collection and this artist edition is a beautiful piece the cloth bound cover and you can see the blind stamping on the front the gold stamping on the spine and it looks so good with the dust jacket on or with the dust jacket off and there is a little note from Sun Tup Editions in there. Uh, but look at the, the end papers, this gold foil look on the end papers. They look so nice. 
And the artist editions are typically signed by the artist. Occasionally it might be an author of a forward or afterward in an artist edition. Suntup also has what they call a classic edition, which they've started doing a lot with authors that are still alive. Mario Puzo is not. Authors that are still alive, they'll have them sign the, the artist edition. They call it a classic edition. But there were a thousand copies of this book. And it is illustrated by Arp Werger. And there you can see the, the front this piece there. And I'm going to try to show you some of these illustrations before we go. Just to see, because it, it is a nice addition to my collection. I'm going to see if I can find some of them here. Just flipping through real quick. Some of this artwork in here. It does look so good. Now, I had never read this book until I pre-ordered the numbered edition from Suntup. And I didn't order the artist edition because I didn't even know if I would like the book. I'd seen the movie, and it was a really good movie. I liked the movie. I was not a, a fanatic for it, but I, to me, it was a really good movie. One that I liked. I'm a fan of Al Pacino. Marlon Brando is great. Uh, but I just didn't know if it was probably a book that I never would have read. And I didn't know if I would care anything about the book. Um, but once I read it, I liked the book more than the movie. Some things were different. There was a lot of stuff in the book that was fleshed out that the movie just left out. They had to. You can make a, as long as that movie was, just think. They had to cut out quite a bit of stuff in the, in the book, but they got all the big stuff, all the important stuff. So they cut some of the ancillary characters, the finish to their story, but they did include a lot of them anyway how they contributed to the overall arc of the story, to the Corleones and the family. Uh, anyway, there's so much art in this book. Suntup Editions is one of my favorite publishers out there that ever lived, that ever existed. And one of the great things they do, besides making high quality books and some great titles, is the artwork, the illustrations. And the artwork varies so much from title to title they do put a lot of effort and focus on trying to make sure the art matches the subject matter or the story itself. And there's a lot of artwork in here. I've lost track of how many I've shown you already, but I, uh, I'm i halfway through the book. How much time you got? I feel like I've also flipped past some. I think I may have there, but I'll show you what I can show you. Just great stuff. Beautiful artwork. I love it. I love the style. And I love the images themselves. Great stuff. Great artwork. Let's find one more. Let's find one more picture in here. We'll head towards the back. I think I've shown some of the most iconic stuff. But we'll head a little bit deeper into the book and show you just one more. And there we go. In Las Vegas now. But anyway, that's my, uh, that's my book haul for the month of August. Picked up a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. I don't know if that's good or bad. Anyway, uh, some of these things are things I've been targeting for a while, like this one here. Some of these things are books that I didn't even know existed. Some of them were holes in my collection that I didn't even know were holes in my collection. An eclectic book haul, in my opinion. And then add that to all the books that I've already shown you quite a month. I'm out to slow down. Like I said, I'm out of space. Anyway, thank you for your time. I do truly appreciate it. I can think of no more lies to tell, so... Say la vie, baby, to do.